What about my sweat equity? Howdy toddy. Sweat equity. No, it's not. What's 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 sweat equity? My sweat equity. My, my, my sweat equity. Yeah, what about it? What about it? What about it, Eric Reggie? I'm hard at work laying bass lines to make our own theme song. I'm going to rap it. Dude, it's so hard to make music when you have no music ear. I know. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you. I definitely have zero. I'm just really hoping for uh, artificial intelligence to step in and guide me. I'm trying to do it like a math problem. That's all I got. It is a math problem. BPMs, beats per minute. Yeah, we want I all right, let's let's try to go over the criteria. What we're looking for in a theme song. If anybody's listening wants to join in on helping us, we're all mm-hmm. ears. Literally, all ears. Get it? <laughs> okay. John Paul, producing behind the glass, give a shout out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh shout out to our other producer. I'm gonna call it producer, not intern anymore, because uh You've been promoted. Buddy Joseph, uh, not here, but he's been helping behind the scenes and working real hard for us. We got, appreciate it. Got that wide dick. So, ladies, you know, I'm glad you remembered. I thought about that the other day. I was like, I'm busting his ass, and we uh, don't ever give him credit for I know. it on he's the show. Doing a lot, uh, and he does. He's a good photographer too. So, if anybody local to the Tampa Bay area, or you want to fly him in if you're in Milwaukee or something, sure. you know. But he'll be really psyched for that Milwaukee hookup you got for him. Hey man, he'll do it. He's he's a hustler, man. I like I I like having people around just in general, even if it benefits me zero, um, to have people around that are just doing stuff. Yeah, especially for what we're doing. Yeah. And he, he reached out and was like, I want to be a part of what y'all got going on. And we're like, Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we've talked about it before, just having this office. Like we don't have to have this office, you know. In I a mean, way, yeah. It, you don't need it for a digital agency, technically. Right. Um, to do the work we're doing, you don't have to have an office. Well, I so here's I I I've done a cost benefit on it, right? And take the show, take the studio out of it. <laughs> Look, how about this? We we all we all do cost benefit in our head. We just don't call it cost benefit, sure, because that's the nerdy business term, right? But you, you're weighing risk, reward, whatever you want to call it. Cost benefit is kind of like, basically, is this going to be good for me? Yeah, any decision. Uh huh. Even if it's microseconds of cost benefit analysis, boringness. But for, for having an office for a digital agency, I have had feedback from clients that have been like, yeah, because I wanted to get their real opinion after we finished up, and they they are like, yeah, I do like coming in here to be able to have a private conversation in person, if, you know, if they're local. Sure, yeah, that is, that's true. But and there has been times where we've had to do shit on the fly, SWAT team style. You know, there's been legal stuff where people break up with a company and we have to, like, get all their stuff. We call it SWAT team work, where you just have to be in here and war room it out for a little bit. Sure. That might have happened a lot more before you came around, but... We're so much better organized now. Uh, we are. <laughs> Swatting people. But I'm saying, like, there's benefits to uh, the reason I look up local freelancers to hire uh, is because there is an advantage to being in a room with everybody for a little bit. We're n- the remote working thing is not as good as we think it is. No, it's not. This is something I just hit y'all with in Slack and uh, our Sweat Equity Slack channels. And I was like, I've been pitching this bit around just to see if it has legs. Get the crickets ready. Yeah, get it ready. I, I gave you that setup just so you had the soundboard ready. Put my finger on it. Go ahead. Give <laughs> that, me the bit. It's just a premise. That's all it is. Okay, what's the premise? I, Sorry, okay, it's working. Good. I just want to see if this theory holds water okay, because it's ahead. happened in my life. Every woman in my life Okay. That's a little over my, that's a little too much cricket. I'm trying to discourage you. Okay, go <laughs> ahead. What's the premise? Every woman something Every woman in my life uh that I love, I whoever I text with we're not like they read it in whatever mood they're in. Yeah. Women read text messages in whatever mood they're in. And if you're listening to this and you're you know, you think it's you, it's this is an aggregate of my whole life of 15 years of texting. I do you Whenever, think it's just women? I think it's more well, I think it's dudes now too. But I only know that dude side cuz dudes are chicks now. 
dudes are chicks now. Well, dudes are more sensitive, right? For sure. I feel like a total puss, and I'm considered more on the the bro aggro side. Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah. Love to to the field. I'm saying. Uh huh. Right. I'm not. I'm not hipster. <laughs> I think hipster emo goes closer to that. Sure. Lady side sensitive. I'm just saying, like, I think I've had more business, like, men in business that I've sent info to, and they'll read it in whatever mood they're in. Yeah. Usually, that's an anger, not anger thing. Yeah. That's that's the dude switch. I would say the dudes just have a more steady mood for the most part. I think people... We're going to be the woman hater podcast. No, I mean, look, guy. I'll give the other side of that. Guys don't give enough detail. So, I, I think that's part of it, too. Yeah, well, but I think that's taken guys. advantage of too. So it's kind of like I always talk about contracts are only as good as they are tight. That's like kind of a old school kind of I think legal logic that I probably ripped off like L.A. law or something when mm-hmm. I was little. But I'm saying like, <laughs> uh, the more information you give, the more there is to poke holes. I th- <laughs> sometimes so it's like, well, yeah. So that's why guys are just like, I'm not going to give you anything. I'll deal with that later. We we'll just go. Sure thing. I'm going to pick up Jody from the airport and they'll read it as like, I'm going to pick up Jody from the airport. Like, Oh, you're just going to pick him up. Huh? <laughs> and, and if I gave a bunch of information, okay, her flight comes in at this and this is it. It'll be like, why didn't you get there at this time? Yeah. That's why dudes don't give enough info. I already did the cost benefit analysis on it. Okay. I just didn't write it out. I've done that. I've said something like that before. I believe you a thousand percent. <laughs> that's where I turn into Asperger's uh, kind of explanation. Oh, that's where. Well, that's okay. Well, yeah. Is it is it me or is it is it uh, nature nurture kind of thing? Have I been kind of uh, has Taught. my life gone that way? And I maybe I'm too sensitive. Yeah, um, we both do that. We write the long uh, over exposition uh, text messages to people. Well, I used to do it and then put the phone down and not care. And I'm getting back to that. I would just try to do it as like, hey, it's like I'm gonna go into a. Um, I'm going to go into a football game. The phones aren't going to work. So here's all the information at one time. And then I don't, I don't want to look at my phone. It's not a life I want to live. Yeah. I don't, I, that screen time pop up on your phones now where mm-hmm. it tells you your average. Oh, don't get that. I, I want to see it because it is like, it's not accurate because I'll have things running on other devices. It's like I have our otter. Oh, well AI. then it's, it's useless. You no, know, it's, it's yeah. useful. I'm just saying like, I, it does show you like, hey, you spend an average of seven hours a day on on screens or something. You're like, yeah, that's, yeah. That's no, low. I know. By that's the way, some... that's a low for me. Really? Well, yeah. Oh, on any screen? Yeah. Yeah. It. it I on have it tagged too. to all my devices. Uh, yeah. That's... So it's probably ten. I think is my average. Probably. Yeah. I'd probably right there. It, I mean. Yeah. And that's not. I a... don't want to do it. I know that's something that's like. For now. Something it, you don't want to do that you should do. It, for now, it just is. It gets easier. Right. Mm-hmm. It, eventually, I won't have to do that as much because I'll be dead. No. Uh, <laughs> eventually, I don't have to. If things go the way they should, you'll have people underneath us, you know, like Joseph, uh, mm-hmm. aforementioned producer that can help take away some of that kind of stuff where you can do more face to face stuff. Yeah. Well, that's you know? the idea. Yeah. I just I don't think it's good. It's probably not healthy. And I find if I am too mired in that, that's why I've been taking my old man walks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, plan those out. Making sure to take breaks when you get in that development zone for websites and stuff. Oh, yeah. You, Design, need, the, you need the mental refresh. Design is the worst if you find yourself like going toggling, like uh, 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 trying to move it just to this little grid spot. Right, and it could be something that you don't use ever. And oh, it's I just was... like you fall down this hole and it's like, well, I got to get it the way I see it. And then you get it and you're like... I talk shit to friend of the program Sean Halter cuz they're making another podcast that will our this studio the Sweat uh Sweat Lodge studio cuz that that'll be our entity I guess as as we go forward to sweatlodge.studio Yeah to rent Check it out. rent this studio out or consult people that want to start their own podcast uh mm-hmm. we're going to start having pricing on that site and mm-hmm. um we can do video uh yeah. consulting too so not if you're not Tampa Bay it doesn't matter like 60% of our clients I think out of like call it 400 uh, people we've consulted are like not even in the area. Yeah. So we we were used to doing telecommunicating kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It uh, gets back to the not needing the office, but 
Heaven in a way, is nice. in a way, but also we use all the buffalo here too. Yes, and it's and the, I'll make the other case too per uh, per square foot rent per square foot of this place. Really good. It's I can't you can't beat it. This yeah the spot that we're in in Tampa is right on Seventh Avenue in Ybor City. We've got the night parade coming up next Saturday. The Ybor City Gasparilla night parade. And yeah, we can like, open our windows and people throw beads in. It's people, great. People people outside the area. It's like Mardi Gras, but we're pirate. We're all pirate themed here, and um, that's that's our deal. The, uh, there's a big day parade that happened two Saturdays. We're doing this on Super Bowl Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, go Rams, I guess. Yeah, everybody's gonna be rooting for the Rams. Well, my dad played for the LA Rams, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to root for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did I tell you the story? He beat that guy Tommy Smith in a race. Mm, no, Tommy Smith. You know the uh, p- black power fist guy. Okay. From back in the day. Was he known for running fast? Uh, he was the fastest sprinter. Like he was like an Olympic sprinter. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, you you you've seen a like. A I clip. didn't consider your dad a uh, a burner. He was like Eddie George. He was tall, but he was fast. Okay. Deceptively fast. Tommy Smith looks fast. 6'3", holy hell. Tall guy. Who? Tommy Smith. That's how, my dad is 6'4". Who was. I think big, he shrank it. Big for a running back. Well, Eddie George 6'3", as well. I always use Eddie George because he used to go to speed camp. <laughs> not not like crank his, speed. <laughs> he didn't go to like the outside of, and of Tennessee. And like yeah. Um, but... I always thought that was interesting, and that's kind of maybe that'll dovetail into more business talk. But I always thought that's interesting because you can't really get that much faster. Yeah, I kind of thought the same thing. But, but you, you can, <clears throat> you can definitely, yeah, you can marginally. The same with like uh, vertical jumping; like you can train your muscles, but like the the fibers that are made up are making your muscles are they're only going to be the proportion that they are. You know, you're not really. You can only tweak your fast mu- twitch muscles fiber so much, improve yeah, them so much. But I, I think about it this way: like I saw that piece on him, like ESPN Sunday Morning Countdown, probably what? When did they put twenty years ago? What, Tommy Smith? No, 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 no uh, Eddie George. Eddie about George. Speed Camp. Uh huh. I don't know why it stuck with me, and now I kind of get it because it's the story of like, hey, he's so dedicated to what he's doing, and he he doesn't want to do that. For He's sure. going to race against children over the course of a summer. He literally just, all he did was like do speed drills, like a sprinter. Yeah. But he wasn't, he doesn't have to. He's a running back. Yeah. Right? I and mean, he was, he was not, not this, was, this wasn't young Eddie George either. Mm-hmm. He'd already won the Heisman, Ohio State, right? So you're already beat up a little bit. Running backs are the most fungible position. Mm-hmm. They cycle in and out. Uh, for sure like three years shelf life you got yeah it, it's amazing what like frank gore did yeah because if he what he's fourth overall yards i think yeah i think you're right but quietly did it because i don't think he liked talking to anybody like, yeah on on camera and stuff and he's still doing it he's done i think now did he Officially, retire this yeah, year i think he had to because he's got like he's banged up i don't know i don't know i don't think he re- he announced it you it don't matter well look in the nfl just like corporate employees, you're not going to keep an old guy around as a backup, right? That's what he did in Miami. Yeah, but he can't do special. He's not going to do special teams. So, just like you're not going to keep old Gill around in sales, he's not. He can't do the the intern work. Sure. Right. You know the uh, the two metrics that they've actually proven scientific or through scientific uh, statistical study that indicate success for a running back that you go, do at the combine vision. Well, just like measurables that they oh. do, like the drills that they do. I, I thought they did an eye test or something. Oh, I'm sure they do, uh, but I'm just talking like the the two metrics. Let me try to guess. Um, Got to be side to side, like sh- the the eraser uh, shuffle. Nope. Okay. Shuttle drill. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. When this you, is in, right. in PE class, okay, you have so to put erasers down on the ground? The only reason I know is because when I was a certified strength and conditioning specialist, they'd send you oh, like yeah, these. Oh, yeah, I uh, forgot about that. They send you these these monthly, like, just uh, sports-related scientific studies that you could read. And and one of them was, like, we they it, it predicted uh, a success. It wasn't, like... Um, something that was a direct it was just like who did the who were these successful running backs and what did they have in common so it was kind of a retroactive yeah, examination Smith? but um before instead of you trying to guess it, it's uh 
I believe it's 40 time and vertical jump. Are the two that really? Bro- yeah, because it indicates explosiveness, vertical jump. Uh, that's gonna sh- like that's the easiest way to see somebody like uh, their inclination to. How old a- is this study? Uh, it was only like ten years ago. Where did but ten, I mean, it was ten years is a lot. A lot of I think has happened in the wellness <laughs> kind of. It well, it doesn't necessarily have to do with any of that. It just has to do with like what had happened in the past. So they were looking at guys who were successful in the NFL and what characteristics did they have that were uh, standout outliers. Huh. That's interesting. I so know. There's a, big That's co- there's a big correlation. You're saying the the coefficient <laughs> of variances? Well, it's just that, that those things are... Uh, like I said, indicators of explosiveness, and that seems to be the uh, number one uh, driving factor for success. So you're saying that the R squared of that is about 92? Yeah. 0.92? Should we move on? <laughs> I just was looking up uh, all this statistical stuff the other day. So. Oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, I, I it like makes stats. me feel smart to say coefficient of variances. Really, that just means how confident do you think because of the stats you have, Ooh. you know? And one is is deterministic, where you know it's going to happen. A plus B equals C. Mm-hmm. And then you grade from zero to one, basically. Oh, so when I, I say R, squ- R squared, R with a little two on the top. I know what that is. I'm just ta- I'm talking to listeners, too. You meant it for me. No, I'm not. No, no, no. He did. He did. Regression charts and all that shit. Uh, the R, R squared, I think, is interesting when you're trying to uh, classify, like, how com- it, it just in like a anecdotal way. Yeah, that's what always fucked with my head was statistics and the like. I don't know why my brain didn't work for actual like college level statistics classes sort of thing. Yeah, yeah I did math and uh, business stuff just always clicked, and then anything like you can do, you can grammar edit, <laughs> you can grammar edit, <laughs> you can proofread and edit, and I have like that is hard for that I could do it. It takes me a long time. Yeah. I don't yeah. know structure of like writing. Yeah, I, I know basic structure, but not like sentence and like. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I I just I accidentally picked it up. <laughs> I wasn't ever like I want to learn how to be a good editor, and it's just like I don't know. I can't stand it when it doesn't sound good. Well, I mean, it goes back to that APQ test we took. The yeah. Advanced personality questionnaire. I was telling someone about this last night at a wedding, and I was like, "Look, man, I <sighs> wedding just- must have been off the chain." I get into real talk, man. We get into real talk, all <laughs> you right? Want to talk about my personality question here? I, I, well, someone was asking me some business questions. Uh, like, if he may come in here this week. He wanted to come in here to work out of here. Just to, I said, look, surround yourself with entrepreneurial people. It'll help you. That's why. I, that's the that's real, a good callback. That's the real reason this office is great because we give keys to what we call prefer independent contractors. Only really because I want I want people motivated around. Yeah. You can get in your own dome. You can stay at home and work on stuff. Uh, plus, the other thing is you're doing conferences, calls. You're doing calls, and I have dogs barking or babies right, crying. Right, yeah. Doorbell ringing. You don't sound professional, right? Yeah. Um, and plus yeah, John Paul be- was talking about that the other day, about how the office really helps motivate him when he's not going to And he comes in with some questions. I'm to happy it. to- Is he sleeping? <laughs> He's dry rubbing. He's not moving. I, I'm happy when uh, every time he has a question, I'm happy to tell him what I know about any of it. You know, like it'll get me thinking about that subject too. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's not a distraction. It's it's like good. Otherwise, it might be three minutes at home that I'm just like fucking with a coffee maker or something. You know. Yeah. I get distracted at home more than here. Oh, for sure. Well, at home, there's no uh, there's an endless <laughs> yeah there's an endless stream of stuff to do. I mean, it's, everything's dirty. Right. Gotta clean everything. Right. But and, and you feel like it's a waste of time if you're not like, well, I could do, I could do laundry. I just start it and then I'll come back and it's not that much time. And then like, you could just do that whenever, right? You know? <laughs> like whenever yeah. you're home. There's a weird compartmentalizing too. I, I want to get to the point where I'm not really taking the laptop home, or I take the laptop home, but only for like emergency. You're situation. not planning to work on it when you get home. Yeah, so I want to be able to like have everything over here that's here and when I'm here I'm family like Olive Garden. Mm-hmm. But I want to have when I'm in the office I want to work eventually and when I'm home I just want to be home. Like that's the life I want to get to. Get bottomless breadsticks up in here. Yeah. Olive that. Garden. We need a we need a sponsor. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, breadsticks, bring them. We'll put it right over this logo we have on the table. We want to get paid regularly, too, though. Not in breadsticks? Bread sti- not ju- well, the breadsticks are part of this. Okay, in contract. Garlic knots, gotcha. I read you. Affiliate marketing link for garlic knots. You just don't get it. Go to olivegarden.com slash sweat <laughs> to get your garlic knots in the mail. Endless garlic knots. It's endless, so you what you have keep to do is... Keep checking that, because if you don't keep checking it, it's just going to get rotten. They send you then, a bowl of garlic knots. You send back the bowl when you're done. It's just endless. Right. They're, they're feeding America. The untied knots. It's so good. Mm-hmm. It's so Olive Garden's so good. We'll send that. Mark this spot on the tape, please. Jump D- on. Cut we'll, this uh, out. Cut this part out and uh, send it off to Olive Garden. We do need a legal disclaimer at the beginning of this show to say uh, anything that could be construed as not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Technically, everything's under the guise of a comedy podcast. Everything is a joke. Yeah. But it also might be true and helpful. I think I think let's, after this, we'll record the ads that we never do pre-roll for. And maybe we'll do that. And I'll read... I'll use my email disclaimer as our <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> God, you that just, thing? It's like 4,000 words. You know why it's long? Why? Because why I... Why do you always want people to sign creepy documents? I've been waiting to use that one. Wow. Wow. These some of these uh that's a good first piece. off, I'm getting you a keyboard. I'm getting you a separate that keyboard. Is it? Yeah, that's some that's some good passive aggressive. Yeah, give me a keyboard. Give me the best best I'm gonna thing. I'm give you a little like top one, of the line. One of those ones they used to have on the side for numbers. I'm just gonna I'm gonna hack it to uh oh, you can just sit there. No, no, no. I want you to feel it like braille so you know your soundboard. <laughs> uh, and we can put little pictures on there. I don't need it. Why what's wrong with the soundboard? You're I, do, I could see you like you put your finger over it like you're playing Battleship or something. I'm still going to do that. <laughs> like, it's not, it has nothing to do with it. I bet if I made a color-coded keyboard that's a USB, just boop, put it in, color-coded, I bet it will work better for you. I'll bet. Or we're going to have a soundboard off. I'll make my own keyboard. Do it. That'd be great. Double the sound effects. I, I'm talking a big game. I won't do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, communication. Back to that a little bit. Because that's kind of where I thought we were going with this episode. Yeah, no, it's it's all well, a little not, off the rails, but the, no, no, we're no. freestyling today. This is a hang sesh, whatever we want to call it. Uh, no guest and just kind of shooting shit. Yeah, it's been a minute since we had a guest. Uh, like five in a row, something. Like uh, we got we got some. We got lined people up. lined we're up. We're trying to get Burt Kreischer and Dave Williamson in here. Ooh, public shame and guilt. Trip. They're not listening. <laughs> Are you sure? Probably not. Uh, they're on tour, the Body Shots tour, so they're they're probably not listening. Maybe we get Louis C.K. because he's coming to Tampa next weekend. Yeah, that's crazy. It's weird. Uh. I want to know more about that. It, it broke yesterday, uh, as I guess the booking happened. Oh, so, I mean, wait, he. That's weird that he booked it that close. Well, if you're him, and that they were available. If you're him, it's smart to be working on your set because every time he goes to New- does shit in New York, there's something written up about him from someone. Yeah. And they're asked, like the media apparently is like asking audience members to give their synopsis. So you're hearing like hearsay basically. Yeah. Plus like audience members after a show do not remember anything. If they come into it and they're mad that he's there, like if their arms folded the whole time, you're going to get that slant. And if uh, yeah. if it's a f- if it's someone who just enjoys his stand up, you're gonna get someone who can't remember what he said. It's the yeah, it's just like the text. People trying to tell me jokes from seeing like someone. It's like they get oh, don't three do- words in. And it's like yeah, uh, yeah, to be know, there. It was yeah. good. Yeah, he does be it better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's just like us texting and over explaining what the mood. What mood are you in? That you know, well, it switches thing. It warps it. Here we need some pragmatic sound drop, like pra- 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 pragmatic, uh, but oh. pra- try to make pragmatic, like as make it cool, opposite as it could be. Um, here's the pragmatic advice I'd say: what I've started doing, and I used to do this a little bit better. It used to probably annoy you. It's easier for me to send the message though. I use the Clips app if you have an iPhone, <laughs> yeah, um, and I could record. Uh, what like we do a lot of design work. Everything we're working on has a lot of element of design, mm-hmm. you know, it, or strategy. Those two things are really hard to articulate unless you have some like set parameters that you know exactly what I'm talking about. But e- 
I can project manage, you can project manage a graphic designer, but it's still like we'll have to get the technical terms down to send it to them, an email, something yes. like that. So what I do is I send an email with that stuff to like a graphic designer, but I also send a video of me trying to explain it too. Yeah. Because sometimes it's like, I don't know what this is. I don't even know how to Google. Like this thing needs to be over this thing. <laughs> yeah. And like it needs to be lighter. Yeah, you can't Google put this thing over this thing. Well, you just have no frame of reference for the whole area, right? For yeah. the whole like s- industry essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the strategies like strategy does have like a like a standardized term of doing stuff. So if you ever look at flow charts, it'll be like you make this triangle that goes to a square, it goes to a circle. Those all mean something. Forms a dick. <laughs> Eventually, all our stuff does. Yeah. And so, yeah, I gotta. You've think been about working on that pussy one. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> oh, the model. Yeah. Um, oh wait, no, the business model. Business model. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to still work Did on. Did you come in? Possibly work on a new podcast recording table that secretly has three like round bulbs. Think of a, think of the Last Supper table, and then as a dick, just just the shaft, and then you have three circles that could go on it. Why three? Well, two what are you balls, dealing with? Two balls and a and a wiener head. Oh, the wiener head. Yeah, gotcha. That tie on to here. And then we never acknowledge that it looks like a wiener. Except for right now. Kind of like the tie, the tie uh, icon we have, mm-hmm. logo, the insignia for this podcast. That we call it a dick tie. We kind of are acknowledging it pretty pretty obviously. Uh, we got to make the t-shirt, the dick tie t-shirt. Yeah. Right? Were you thinking that the dick comes all the way down the shirt like you're wearing the tie? Like a tuxedo shirt. Okay. Because it's going to be too hard to make an actual tie. Well, yeah, yeah. Because you'd have to like get a different style of tie made. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, you'd ha- you'd be creating a new kind of tie. We're having to patent that. I just I want to go on bonfire and just make something. Okay. You know, but I think we got to round it off. We're squared up on those nuts. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I know what you're going for the collar. Yeah, but they might be too on the nose but or on the dick. <laughs> dick nose. <laughs> a little on the dick, don't you think? Would you rather have a dick for a nose or balls for ears? Oh, balls for ears. You sure? You can would I could grow my hair out. Put it, put it under you, a hat. You can, and this the hair doesn't grow out from these magical. It powers. won't be good hair. Okay, it'll just be. I got balls to cover up, bro. But think about I'd this. I'd rather way. people be looking at my bad hair. Are you than my ear? ear this nuts. is a great hypothetical. No one chooses. I went dick for nose, but no one chooses that. Well, that's because it's right in the front of your face. You can't hide that. You can't hide balls on your ears. I just told you how I would. How would you do it? Grow my hair out. You can't wear grow- a wig. If anybody's watching video, you're not fooling anybody. I can grow enough to like Stanza whip it style? around. I could do a, a comb over gimmick, like you know, we're the talking, bald guys used to do. We're talking a year and a half before you even get to that, and Fine. then you look dumb. Okay, and then my worries about my ear nuts are done. You have a dick but they for get nose longer for the as you get older. So does your dick nose? Perfect. That's advantage. <laughs> advantage. Dick oh, you're nose. using. You're fucking with the dick. Okay. Yeah. So now you wanted a second dick. What happens when you sneeze, buddy? <laughs> that's gonna be trouble. Did you come in it? But that's what happens. That's a good. If you're at a dinner party and things are getting a little stagnant, that's a great question. Yeah, really, it really uh, breaks the ice. Because everybody chooses balls for yours, so I already have the dick for nose sneeze joke ready to go. I love the question. <laughs> it's, uh, we yeah. forgot you were there. <laughs> huh, who said that? <laughs> di- we didn't know we were recording. I think a dick nose is more useful. It's de- if you're more utility based person, you know more uh, Nick Saban's of the world. Yes, <laughs> you you probably would go for. And plus, they're the elephants. Makes sense. Oh yeah, the Crimson Tide elephants. Yeah, whatever that means. Stupid name. Identity. Well, I can't make fun. Auburn's got three mascots. Um, so communication. I think it's important. We do proposals. I like to send a video with it because it is a lot of stuff. It's a lot to keep up with. What we were talking about before we got on air is maybe having this evergreen content when we send a proposal that they can look at. Here's what the marketing funnel means. Here's what content means. Here's what. Here's how we see it. Here's our totem pole model. Very close uh, to making this a real thing. Here's how. Yeah, pretty close. I look like John Gruden on crack trying to figure this out when people walk in. I'm like, I got it. So close. X logo right. 
Slot receiver goes X out. Mm-hmm. Good total pull, man. It's a good. T- <laughs> I can't even do it. That's, that's pretty good. Though. Thanks. Yeah. You've been working. I really, no, I just, you've been, I'm just you've been watching good. a lot of Frank Caliendo. Well, uh, Jay Gruden. So the, same the pragmatic advice is try to send. I try to send uh, important messages in a couple of ways because the user wants it maybe in text form. Maybe they can't look at a video. Maybe they can. O- they only want to listen to audio because they're doing something like stuff around the house or a video could be more broad and it can say uh drill down to this part of the proposal if you want to look there or something or you can hit the bullet points make it so they can absorb it in whatever medium they can absorb it in so you're i in a way i want to do that that way so it's not my fault that they can't watch a video and then they never got back to it right because you get a lot of that Uh, so what you do with the clips app is if you have an important message send it then you get the transcript of that, copy and paste it. I throw it in Evernote. I want to check it on that grammar. Well, you, you go back, you can edit it. Mm-hmm. I just usually don't for you because you know what I'm saying. Yes. And you'll probably watch the video more times than the transcript. Yeah. Read the transcript. Well, whatever's convenient at the time. But right. It, that's why you do it in multiple forms. Right. And the video is also audio, technically. Mm-hmm. So you don't. That's the two minute warning. Perfect. Perfect. Video is also audio. Finish your thought. Yeah, and then I was telling a uh, friend of the program, Damien Alpazar, because he's doing this for his proposals. I think on Vimeo, because we have live stream Vimeo Premium. Cause Diamond of, Platinum Club. Whatever the best one is for the year. I think you can embed, for the e-learning stuff, interactive video mm-hmm. stuff they have, I want to put like a secret password. That of course. To tell you, I want to know if they watch the whole thing. Uh huh. Right. So you go to move on. You gotta put it, and then you put banana hammock as the password, sure. and you change it up all the time. Lemon party. <laughs> dot org. Dot org. Check uh, it out. Tubgirl. Dot com. Something like that. But you put it in as the password to get to the next section or something. Yeah. We're trying to figure out these things that we can do a one way message, and then we know on the other side that they're actually looking at it. Yeah. W- without having the fucking. Uh, their uh, laptop camera pop on uh-huh. to see them watching this, yeah. us, you know. Oh, God. But you know what I'm saying? Like, we want to be able to have people digest a message the way they want to, but also we want to make sure the quality of their listening is there mm-hmm. without yeah. annoying them too much. Yeah, that's a tough one. The secret word is probably the best bet at this point. It's a thought. If anybody has any ideas, I'm all ears. I think uh, this is definitely a a work in progress kind of thing that I hope we'll follow up with later down the line. Yeah. Um, but thanks for listening. What about my sweat equity? iTunes, Spotify. Sweatequitypod.com. Hit us with any questions. Hit a question in the reviews. Rate, review, five-star that shit. Ask a question, we'll probably answer it on air. iTunes first, then everything else. Then everything else. Bye-bye.